I feel like I owe you guys an apology because I have been holding back this amazing AI Google Chrome extension. It saves me, if not minutes, potentially hours a week for sure. It attaches into Gmail and the abilities that it provides enables you to save significant amounts of time when replying to email. So the tool is called Compose.ai and it is a Chrome extension. And as you can see, I already have this downloaded. And what this will do is allow you to have this little symbol that I've got up in the top right hand corner, which allows you to do a variety of different things. You'll see that this symbol will then upload when you've got Google uh, Docs and Gmail open and we're gonna start off with the most common way that you might use it. And then I'm gonna show you my favorite hack. So the easiest thing to do with a Google Docs or a Gmail is to press the two forward hashes and you can see that it comes up immediately. So if I wanted to write a word bank for year four, because I'm teaching year four now, I'm gonna give it a number to be more specific and then just let it run. And then from there, you can see it's just popped up. You only actually get a thousand words for free with the free account. And there is a little bit of a problem because then that can get used up very quickly, especially if you're applying to long emails. One thing that I love to do with this functionality is to reply. If I use the two lines and press reply, I can then write down double hash and I can be really specific with the points that I want to cover in my reply. However, this is not really the tool that I use most of the time. When I'm replying to an email, most of the time I will use this tool. This is an example email that I might receive as a teacher straight away, just as I'm about to start teaching. And it can be quite challenging, especially if the children are in and I'm trying to set things up and bits and pieces like that to get back to an email like this straight away. This is an email where someone's saying that, you know, someone's been unwell overnight and I need to be able to send an email back. So obviously I'm gonna read through this uh, and just quickly skim and scan to see whether there's things that I'm missing. But straight away I can see that they want some sort of update on you know, whether it's okay to have time off, whether there's any missed assignments or coursework. And I kind of know that I just wanna kind of say thank you, thank you for letting me know that the child's gonna be sick. Sometimes Gmail will give you that auto reply where I can just press thank you for letting me know, but I think that's too short. So this is where this blows my mind and there's not that much of a limit. So I will put here what the limit is, but I just press say thanks let it do its thing, and as you can see, dear Thomas, the parent, thank you for informing us about Bob's absence due to his illness. We appreciate your prompt communication and understanding of the importance of regular attendance. Now, this next part might be a bit too waffly, but again, as a teacher, I just need to quickly proofread this. Please focus on, yeah, I would have said that. We will provide him with any missed assignments so he can catch up when he returns to school. Um, yeah, so it's important that he returns to school. If there are any specific instructions or material, we will make sure to provide them. Now, I'm not gonna need that because I'm not gonna be provided. And as you can see, now I'm not gonna need that part. And as you can see, I'm just gonna quickly go through once again. Thank you for your understanding and support. We hope Phil, Bob feels better soon. Best regards, Mr. Blakemore. That's pretty much bang on to what I would send to be completely honest with you. Um, so that's the example of say thanks, which is spot on. And what I find with emails is you're typically gonna say those three things. You're either gonna thank someone for letting you know that you haven't done it, especially if you know you've made a mistake. You're gonna say no if they're asking something and it's not quite right, or you know they're asking a simple yes, no question. Or again, most of the time you're probably gonna say yes to something. Let's look at another email that's a little bit different. Okay, so the next email is going out for play. A parent wants to know whether or not they're allowed to go out for play um, due to the weather and things like that. And I'm just quickly, you know, given the evolving situation with the weather in the UAE, okay, we're looking at the heat in Dubai and things like that. Could you provide me with information on whether it's currently safe or permissible uh, for children to go out to play in the area? Any guidance or updates you can provide will be greatly appreciated. Thank you for your assistance and guidance in this matter. Uh, unfortunately, it's too hot at the moment in Dubai, so we're gonna just simply say, say no, and we're gonna let that just do its thing. I might be carrying on with something. I hope this email finds you well. Thank you for your importance uh, reaching out to inquire about the current guidelines. As always, the safety, yep. Considering the evolving weather situation, we want to ensure the following uh, appropriate recommendations and guidance. However, at this time, it's not advisable due to, yeah, due to the, the heat being over 
40. Uh, we appreciate uh, your understanding. Should there be any changes? We'll probably, again, as I'm just quickly doing this, quickly delete that. Thank you again for your concern. Again, it's pretty concise. Yeah, and I, if I really needed to, I can adapt this and tailor new words and things like that. But for the most part, this email is fairly spot on. I would say that sometimes it gets too formal, um, especially if it's a long email. But like I said, with the two hashes, that's where you can become much more specific with the emails. This really is just for quick emails to give you a bit of an outline. And you do, obviously, as a teacher or whatever professional, you need to go back, just like with any AI tool, proofread, check, and adapt. But yes, compose.ai saves me so much time and I cannot emphasize how important it is for you to go and check it out. I am sorry that I've been holding it back from you uh, for so long, but hopefully now you can save yourself some time. If you found this video useful, it is completely free, just subscribe. That's all I ask in return and hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, feel free to go and check out my email list. I'm sending out more and more tech tools and AI tools and you're missing out basically. So go, for, <laughs> go and do that and hopefully I'll see you in another video. Until then, I'm out.